Uh, I moved here in 2006 and I lived in a big city. I am a health educator and uh, nutritionist and I help other people get well. So I know a lot about health, I know a lot about how body works and uh, I am mainly, I'm an organic farmer now that moved here in 2006 from Chicago actually. And uh, I started noticing changes in my body as I moved here because I follow my body very, very dearly and know exactly what uh, is happening in my body. I am very observative because uh, I want the best health for myself and for my family. That's why we eat organic food and that's why we use organic products uh, for cleaning and everything that we can do to take our chemical load down because we know chemicals are treated as toxins in the body. And so, and they cause all kinds of different diseases. So basically, uh, in 2007, I got exposed to spray, which was from Seneca Jones, and uh, I got myself educated on the pesticide fact sheets from the uh, NCAP, Northwest Coalition Alternative to Pesticides, which is a wonderful source of information uh, that is not funded by the timber industry. Underline that. And it's an independent study that shows us the fact sheets and the pesticides. So basically, what I noticed, and I'm going to be very personal here, and I've been waiting for this moment for six years that I've been working on this issue. So I'm going to take my time explaining this to you. Uh, in 2007, after spray, uh, where I was outside, I'm an outside person. I'm always outside working. You can see by my tent. That's my testimony. So basically, uh, 2007, Seneca Jones sprays by our house. I'm outside, my husband is outside, and uh, uh, we get air from China people. <laughs> so let's face it, Japan, radiation, we get air from all over the world. So we get air from these little hills. It just, it's just a normal thing, it just moves. So the wind flows, we have uh, wind change when the timber industry says that they're going to be careful how they spray. We have wind moving in four to six, ten different directions at the same time. We have actually, this, actually uh, documented this on a video. Fog evaporates. It's just like uh, the tissues of the earth is like actually like a tissue of your body. So when you, poison your, you put poisons on your body and when you start to sweat, just like Mother Earth sweats, it creates fog and it evaporates. We have these chemicals that actually takes years to actually, depending upon the sunlight, depending upon the uh, conditions in our uh, in air, that actually uh, have byproducts that are more toxic than the actual mother chemical. And we don't even know what's in the uh, so-called inert ingredients, that it's actually even more toxic. Now, we understand the official uh, uh, the, where a lot of official information comes from. There's a lot of good people. All you guys are good people, but you have jobs. You have to pay your bills. You have family to take care of. And the fact is that a lot of the uh, research and a lot of pesticide industry is invested in. Uh, Oregon, uh, uh, Oregon universities are all funded by the pesticide industries. So why does the uh, industry uh, pesticide fact sheets don't match the fact sheets of the independent, independent uh, researchers? There's a question there. So basically, when I got exposed, it took me a whole year to feel my best. I have a birthright to be healthy, to deliver healthy children, to live in joy, and to pursue life. And I am not going to let anyone pollute my first food, which is air. Air is our first food. Water is secondary. Let me tell you something. I spent a lot of money testing and testing and testing. I brought in a forensic agronomist, paid him thousands of dollars to test my land. Just so many months after the spray has happened, it made me sick. And what happened is, this is, I'm talking about now, on this recent spray, 2011 in spring, when the ridge behind the Triangle Lake was sprayed. 24 hours of that spray, after that spray, I submitted my urine. My winter test was actually, I was, in, I, I was shocked. I, was, I had 2,4-D and atrazine in my urine in winter. So why did that 
leave my body. I eat organic, I detox my body, I am like the, the pro-health. And so why was I tested positive in winter? And then after the spray happened, uh, after uh, I was exposed 24 hours after the spray, I, my levels were higher uh, of those same chemicals. Why didn't I leave? I do so much to detox, but they don't leave. So I do not agree with you, Elizabeth, at all. Mm -hmm. And so basically, let me tell you about inflammation in the body. My that, my I'm my sorry. Okay. 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 So, uh, question. I question. Heard, I, heard, I heard question. Hang on one sec. One sec. <laughs> okay. I heard two questions. And there's one more. There's much more okay. uh, so important. Let me, let me ask you. Okay. Okay. Could you identify that third question and then let's let's let folks answer your question. And yes, then I will. I, I apologize. I've been I've been waiting for this for so long and working on this for six years. Okay. Anyways, so. so My question to you is, I have tested, this is based, the question, uh, the question is leading, I have to tell you something so it leads into the question. I tested soil, three different locations on my land. I tested one creek that is a full time, uh, all season creek. I tested the water at the seasonal creek. I tested my pond and I tested my drinking water. We did not test the air. This is two months after that spray. We did not find anything in our water, not nothing. In four bodies of water, nothing was found. Soil was tested, this was through the EPA lab, Amatech. This is a professional person that actually came in because we wanted to uh, uh, have the chain of custody and have a base for our property. However, my body has 2,4-D and atrazine, and I, I, don't even, I, can't, I don't even have time to go into the health effects of that. But my question to you, how will you address air re Volatilization, which happens constantly, revitalization through the of those chemicals being carried by fog. So, because again, I don't have anything in my soil, I don't have anything in my water. I'm happy, thank God. But I have this stuff in my body. I was tested 24 hours after the after the spray. My levels went up. It's obvious to me that it's in the air. It's in the fog. How will you address the air? How will you address the fog? How will you address the revitalization? And and uh, that's my question to you. Okay. So. The, you said the third question was the one that you were really wanting to answer. Yes. Is that right? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, sorry, you did. Um, but uh, when we have, when we've been thinking about how we're going to put together this exposure investigation, you know, the stone soup um, story about, you know, I've got a potato, you've got can a you potato. Can you put your microphone on? Please? Oh, thank you. Uh, can we turn it back up in? Um, no one agency here has the resources to do this whole exposure investigation. So uh, some of us, as Richard said, are going to be doing one piece of it, the human urine testing, some will be doing air testing, some will be doing water um, uh, vegetation. EPA is, uh, is our colleague, too little too loud, um, uh, who is going to be uh, gearing up for the air portion of this. So that's why I'm going to kick it back over to you guys. Uh, so how, how might a EPA deal with the question of <coughs> testing air, revolatilization, fog. Um, I, yeah, I agree with you. I think that, okay, is this on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that air is a, is a likely pathway of exposure. Um, as someone who does exposure assessment a lot for a living, it's my own suspicion, but this is my own suspicion, not necessarily the representation of all the, everybody here, is that it's probably a very sub substantial um, way that people are being exposed. Um, so the way that we plan to do that is actually come out here and test the air. And we'd like, given the resources that we can muster, we'd like to, to test the air just under normal, typical everyday conditions, a day like today would be great. We'd also like to test the air on people's properties in the vicinity of actual spraying occurring, because I think that's important data that we need to gather. I think it's essential 
that we gather that data. This is happening? As it's happening. This is going to happen, what you're saying? It, well, no. It, oh. <laughs> it's something that we're, good. We're, try, yeah, we're trying to come up with it, but we're, I am spending a lot of my time trying to come up with the funding and the specific methodology to, to use to test this air. Um, I will be perfectly honest with you, as we stand here tonight, I have, do not have the dollars assigned to me to do that testing. But it doesn't mean that when I get back to Seattle um, and walk back into the office Monday morning, it's not going to be one of the first things that I'm going to be doing is continue to make calls and try and secure that funding. So, yeah, um, yeah it's an important thing. We think it's essential that it be tested. And we're doing, we're, we're going to try and find a way to have that testing done. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry that I took so long. No, 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 it's fine. I just was uh, trying to decipher the question. Okay.